Hey friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Tirso. I don't currently have a desk set up here with good lighting, so this will have to do. So far on grids, I have covered modular two and four column grids. In this video, I'm covering three and six column grids. No need for a long intro, let's just get into it. Here is how I use three and six column grids. Here is our three column grid. We need some content. These are just from my travels. I'm leaning into using my own photography in my videos. We start off easy using the grid exactly as is. It's actually almost aligned to the grid already, so let's just align it fully. First the text, and then our images. Okay, great, we're done. I'm totally kidding. This is a very intentional opportunity to remind you about line length. I mentioned this in the modular grids video that the width of your text box influences the styling. The ideal character count is 45 to 75 characters. This shows how your point size should change depending on the width of your column. Our text is currently set to eight points, which is common for a body copy in print, depending on the typeface. In order for this to fall in the 45 to 75 character range, it would have to be 10 points. This brings the line length to roughly 74 characters, which is still at the top of the range. The space our text block took up also increased, which leaves us less room for the images, and we have six cities to fit. So, starting with a blank three column grid again, we can break up the space equally into a top row and a bottom row. Essentially, what we've done is create a three column modular grid with six modules, one for each city. We can drop in the first photo and then the text underneath. I want these to take up the full module. I'll bring that down and then we extend the cropped. Super straightforward and then the rest of the cities can follow the same formatting. Looking at everything together, Barcelona is the only city that's at night. I have a night shot for Paris so it can have a friend. Now this is our layout. We use the grid. Things are feeling a little cramped. We can adjust this by increasing our gutter space and realigning everything. Let's remove the grid to look at it. Simple, very mindful, very demure. Not the most exciting layout, but there is beauty in simplicity. We can make this more dynamic by breaking the grid. Starting with our photo, then our text. Let's zoom in. I would like the text to match the height of the image, which means we need to style it differently. An easy way to save space with text is using a condensed typeface. It works for this content because they're deep captions. I wouldn't recommend a condensed face for long body copy. The line length did increase, but only to 55 characters, so we're in the range. As I said before, there are rules, and then there aren't rules to using a grid. Instead of using the grid line, I'm going to extend the photo to align with the center of the gutter. Is it a grid line? No. Does it use a grid? It does. The text relates to the photo, so I would argue that the Gestalt principle of proximity emphasizes that relationship. The next city is Paris, same formatting. I always try to separate when two images or two text blocks are together, so I'll swap their positions. The balance feels better to me this way. The difference is the symmetry through mirroring on the left, but image heavy on one side and text heavy on the other. By flipping it, it's symmetrically balanced by weight. Let's drop in Rome. Since we have text next to it, I put the photo above. This is how the text is fitting. We can align it to the bottom of the Paris photo and then extend the crop to meet the margin. I established the metrical balance with the first two cities. I think it would make sense to maintain that. To balance Rome, I can use the same formatting for Barcelona, opposite from it, and then the last two cities will balance out the first two. The page is now symmetrically balanced by weight horizontally. This is looking a little crazy. As we did in the first example, we just adjust the space so that the information is clearer to understand. I'll remove the grid line so it's easier to see. We have two night shots. To balance those out, they should be on opposite ends. We can add lines to separate each of the cities. By creating these sections, it utilizes the Gestalt principle of common region, and this is a second option. For both layouts, I've used all the content separately. It would be nice if the photos could get bigger. Instead of removing cities, we can do an option where we don't illustrate all of them. Starting with our text, I'm using the body copy formatting and it's following the grid as is. I'll add an image. We talk about breaking the grid, making the layout more dynamic, so I'll have the photo span two columns. When you anchor the image to a corner of the page, you do have the option to extend to bleed so it gets even bigger. You can technically put the other images wherever you want. Emphasis on the technically. I like to let the content dictate where things go. Right now, I want the text to align in the bottom here. 
The text in the middle is already aligning, so I don't want to touch anything there. And last, the hero image is of Rome, so I want to push that into the next column so that it's in the vicinity of the photo. Which means we need a photo in that first column. I want it after London because there's already an image above it, so Paris makes sense. With that change, we actually fixed everything already. And we finished the layout with a third image conveniently sized in the middle of the other two. And this can be San Sebastian, Barcelona, or Luzerne, doesn't really matter. I would say that Rome and Paris are pretty obvious, but not sure everyone knows San Sebastian. To help those relationships, we can add captions. This is an alternative option. For something like this, you can move the elements around. You just need to watch how your text is landing. The scale and spacing will always make sense because we use a grid. Here are all the options again. Not too bad for a three column grid. Before I get into six column grids, I want to call out something. I often hear that six column grids are flexible because you can use them as two or three columns and then they do something like this. We have a six column grid. Maybe they'll drop in text at the bottom as three columns. And then because there's three columns of text, they feel inclined to align their images to those columns. Maybe one like this and then two smaller ones. Let's remove the grid. Is there anything wrong with this layout? No. Can anyone tell you six columns? Also no. For me, it doesn't make sense because you're not using the full grid. And on a petty note, how come the people that perpetuate that sentiment also don't use the full grid? Irregardless, the flexibility of a six column grid is that the extra grid lines help you fit more content. And taking advantage of that flexibility only helps you in your design process. I'll span this across three columns. For the text, if this was a two column grid, it would follow the same width. But now we have flexibility to give contrast in the column width, which I'll say is the key for making your layouts more visually interesting. I'll shorten this to take up two columns. We only have so much space underneath, so one of the cities can fit there. Our next city can go in the top right. The line length is too long for three columns, but if I style it as one and a half columns, we run out of space for the image. A nice solution is to make it two columns that span across three columns of our grid. If I bring in the image below, it creates this trapped white space. I want the image to align to the bottom of the London photo, so I'll move it up. And look at that, a gift from God, we can extend the image all the way up because the text can read on top of it. If the text needs to breathe, I'll add some padding around that. I'm not measuring the padding here, this feels right, so I'm fine with it. Why I'm saying this works, when you block out an area for content in a grid, you can pretty much do anything inside of that block because it's functioning as one unit. Think of it like a mini poster within the layout. We already have three cities on the page and a lot of space left. I'm very systematic about this. You certainly don't have to be. Again, I don't love when text blocks are next to each other, so we need an image here and then text to follow. Next to it, it's the same except flipped, and then Lucerne can go horizontally. It's not fitting exactly. In the other grid videos, I showed you how to use the grid to determine proportions. I'm gonna do the same here. I only use the whole or half of the gutter or column to cheat things. Let's zoom in. This is the width of the half gutter. I'll use this proportion to space this entire area. First, the text from the right margin, the space between the image and text. Let's align the image. This doesn't need to align to the grid. I'll add a colored box behind it. Use that half gutter to fit the space above and below and also on the left side. Now everything fits. Let's remove the grid and make some adjustments. That half gutter width we just used, we can apply to the rest of the captions in relation to their images. As far as I'm concerned, we use the grid to get this far. We now break some of the rules to benefit the layout with some white space. I want to increase the white space above and below these two sections. I'll match the same width to the left and the same for this as well. I think that's it. Let's look at those changes. Nothing wrong with the layout on the left. The one on the right feels a little more polished to me. The white space helps the sections become these little vignettes within themselves. All right, you can only do so much when it's content like this outside of moving elements around. I'm gonna change it so we can look at other explorations of the grid. Earlier, we put the text on top of the image. This will often not always work if your photo has a sky. It conveniently also works for my room photo. So let's try it full bleed. 
For the text, I'm going to use that three column format I showed you earlier in the segment. I wanna be clear that it's not wrong to do this. We just have to use the rest of the grid in order for it to be a six column grid design. The text isn't aligning at the bottom. We can alleviate that by using another image because we can control how much space it takes up. This height evens out the alignment at the bottom now. We don't want to align to the text. Instead, we align using another part of the grid, in this case, the middle of the gutter. Earlier, I added short captions inside of the photos. We have the space here so we can put a slightly longer caption in the extra column. We broke the grid, which is great. I do think that we need to break it somewhere else. The caption takes up one column, so it would be nice to have another element that takes up one column, like a pull quote. I am doing this as an example, but I also do this for my own projects. I would just go to an editor and say, can I have a pull quote for the page? I believe in practicing what I preach, so work with your colleagues and clients to get the results that you want. Here is our pull quote that takes up one column. This little guy over here, it's kind of hard to see because it currently matches the body text. Also, I flush justified the text with the last line left aligned. I still needed it to fit and without cutting the text, some typesetting does the job. We need it to be more noticeable. Here's some advice that comes from Fred Woodward, who was the design director at GQ for many, many years. If you want something noticed, make it big. If you want it noticed more, make it bold. If you need it noticed more, make it in color. And if that's not enough, make it red. This was his approach, so I'm giving him full credit. It worked for him in 1998 at Rolling Stone. It worked for him at GQ in 2001. It worked for me in 2012 when I learned it at multiple jobs, so it will work for you today. We need Rome somewhere on here. Sure, let's look at it. If you know my design style, I always love overlap. I think it gives the page more dimension. I can add a border instead of the full bleed and then extend the top image to the bleed. What's working for me in this layout is that we've broken the grid both horizontally and vertically. The small moments with the caption and the quote show the use of the six column grid. The next example is typically the way that I use a six column grid. Instead of allocating three columns, split the grid unevenly right away. Maybe it's four and two columns. This is an immediate asymmetrical layout. If you shifted it to three and a half and two columns, also asymmetrical, but immediate white space. Okay, same process, use the grid, adjust after. Here's our image, we need Rome. Something delicate can be nice. Then our text. We need to watch the line length, so I'll break it into two columns in that space. We can use the leftover space for two cities that have shorter descriptions. Here I'm mixing the type styles for contrast. I wanna stop here to review what's going on. This gutter needs more space for separation. I'm gonna do this a couple different ways. The easiest solution is to bring the body copy to three and a half columns. This creates a nice white space. I think the misalignment with the photo is also a nice moment. A variation of this layout would be to use the gutter width to inset the image over and then fill that space with a separator. Something like these lines prevent the additional element from being too heavy because it has a lot of white in it. It also has a nice contrasting pattern, all the things. Next option, this is where we were. Instead of using two columns on the right, I'm going to use one and a half. I'll adjust the text to this width. I don't want to extend the crop of the image down, so I'm going to bring the image with a copy to align to the bottom of the margin and then extend the image crop up. Here are the three options. I can't say that one is officially better than the other. One thing to note was that I stopped midway in the process to review the possible ways of creating separation between the two columns. What I like about these layouts is that they could very well be three different designers with their own personalities. On the left, a designer who doesn't like to complicate things. The one in the middle is a designer that needs a little more fun and loves an extra element. The one on the right is a minimalist and definitely always designs in Swiss poster design. I would like to push this layout further with one more option. Going back to this point, I want to add an additional sidebar to the page. We can be more dramatic with our columns. I'll make the running body copy span three columns. In the middle here, we have one column and that's where I'd like to fit the sidebar. Here is our sidebar content. Because the column is so thin, it would make sense to use the condensed styling here. For contrast, I'll use the regular sans serif type for the two cities. We're starting to get a lot of text at the bottom, so I'll flip them and have the photo underneath. 
I also flipped the cities, just feels better. I don't know. I want some white space and a separating line between them. For the sidebar, I need to separate it from the right side, so I'm gonna cheat the width over, and also, since it's tied to Rome, we need to connect it somehow. I always mention the Gestalt principles, so you're aware of them. I have yet to do a video explaining all of them, but one way to group like elements is through common region. To do this, we can create a colored background, aka a region, and then extend it to the elements we'd like to connect it to. This is nice, but I want overlap, so I'm gonna cut it short to three columns, which mimics the width of our body copy. The text still reads, I just wanna show you the difference. On the left, we know the image is on top because we designed it, but there's no visual cue. The image is just surrounded by color. On the right, we have this moment where the edges cross. It also doesn't bleed at the bottom so that the white space is connected across the page. A few more finishing touches. Our sidebar should have some sort of title. It is crashing. We can fix this not by adjusting size, but re-ragging the text to save that space. Another Gestalt principle to group elements is the law of similarity. I can color block this and visually they are now grouped. Last, more overlap by treating the title. Do you remember what I said earlier? If you want something noticed, make it big. If you want it noticed more, make it bold. If you need it noticed more, make it in color. Because it's so bold, the black is a little heavy. The blue helps it recede a bit in the sky. I'm happy with this, so we don't need to make it red. To further emphasize overlap, I can bring it down into the skyline. It feels a little low, so let's bring it up. In order for the text to fill the rest of the space, we need a shorter width. Using the gutter size again to cheat it over, that does the trick. We'll add some leading styling, bounce the gutter a bit, and we're done. Again, it's the finesse you put into the layout that makes it your own. In regards to my design process, I added color, but I only added it after I felt the layout was in a good spot. People say they can design with color, and that may be true for some, but for most, it serves as a distraction from really looking at your elements as shapes. And here are all those options. So that is how I use three and six column grids. The next video on grids will be on five and seven column grids. Drop any questions in the comments below. Check out more content on the channel and happy designing.